Welcome to Escaping Purgatory, a podcast where we watch Supernatural, then talk it through in the hopes that we can finally escape this show. Join us each week, leave comments on upcoming episodes, and together we can escape Supernatural Purgatory. Hi! Hello! <laughs> Alright, this week... Oh, I'm not surprised, actually. Um, so this week we're talking about Season 5, Episode 11, Sam Interrupted. Mm-hmm. Um, written by Andrew Dabb and Daniel Laughlin and directed by James Conway. Yep. And just before we started recording, we're sort of saying that this episode was not great, Mm -hmm. but it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. And the the reason why I feel like it could have been a lot worse is that they don't really focus on any patient in particular Mm -hmm. so they don't really apart from the beginning yeah they don't diagnose anybody with anything Mm. and then have to have these actors act quote-unquote crazy yeah you just sort of see them in the background and they just look like you know they're sitting around for the most part there's obviously a couple of scenes where Mm -hmm. um we see typical stereotypical like who flew over the cuckoo's nest crazy yeah yeah scenes yeah. Mm-hmm. um obviously the the doctor in this i have a few problems with oh, i yes. don't think <laughs> the doctor is particularly good mm. so that that's my those are my two main things that i was kind of disappointed in that the, the doctor was so dismissive of everybody yeah i agree and like even even the 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 pudding moment i was like this this feels really like at the time i thought it was really funny yeah same but watching it now i'm like "Mm." this is this is not it yeah it's not it yeah i agree with you it's not funny anymore i don't know (laughs) i guess like my sensibilities have changed i got older and like jokes just hit different i don't know i'm trying to think what my sense of humor is now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know like yeah. compared to what it was back then because i agree with you i also was like oh this is actually real cringe at, like yeah mm-hmm. i i think the problem with this episode is it's i was saying yeah before we started recording i think anything to do with mental illness is a bit of a minefield and you're right i think they actually could have done this worse <laughs> which is saying <laughs> something like we have so much faith in supernatural like this could have been worse I guess up front, like, um, yeah, there is a bit of talk in this about, I get, I, I get, I, I, I don't think there actually is a lot here about mental illness because it's just them. Um, it's basically the prison episode again, like they're just somewhere yes. confined, really. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a few moments of um, discussing of suicide, though all of the ones, all, all the like acts in this are actually happening. It's the monster making mm-hmm. it look that way so they're actually murderers um yeah but i don't know it was it was okay like i actually really remembered this episode but i don't know why it particularly stands out i think it's because they they face like <laughs> they're facing their inner demons i guess like yeah. sam confronts his rage Dean confronts like a lot the conversation yeah a lot basically yeah (laughs) he um you know the conversation that he has with his imaginary doctor yeah I shouldn't really say that the the conversation he has with his doctor Mm -hmm. are quite insightful yeah um (laughs) there's one line in this which I won't even mention now which was like Dean (laughs) please go get some actual therapy because this needs sorting out my friend, my dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so I guess with that, we can get into it, right? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right. So we get the recap and it's a lot from the previous episode, Abandon All Hope. Mm-hmm. So we see Meg with the Hellhounds. Um, we also then get Yellow Fever where when Dean is doing his like meltdown over ghosts. Yeah. He says, well, do you know who does that? Crazy people. We're insane. Um, 
We also see Sam after he's just fought uh, Tim and Reggie. Mm -hmm. And he's got like, which kind of plays into this episode now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, And then we get the sort of final confrontation between Sam and Lucifer Mm -hmm. at the end of last week's episode. And about how, you know, Sam needs to keep fanning that flame in his belly. Yeah. Yeah. So we then are at a psychiatric hospital in Ketchum, Oklahoma, like Ash. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> and we see a doctor open up a patient file and he's talking with the patient in front of him. And she doesn't want to take her pills because they make her tired. Mm-hmm. And if she sleeps, the monster will come. And the doctor's being like, you know, you have to take it, you know, um, because you're schizophrenic, your mind plays tricks on you, you get confused. Like this is this way he's talking. Yeah. I don't, I've never been in a situation like this that, you know, I need medication for a mental illness, but like, I don't feel like a doctor should be like, this maybe maybe being this blunt is what she needs but i don't know it just felt weird it, no he's a bad doctor like the way he talks to sam later on as well is also not it like he he's not a good doctor yeah. okay yeah if she acknowledges that she knows what she is and that seeing her son dead son in front of her or um is not real mm. but she knows that the monster is real and the doctor's like, what, you know, you're, what, what's happening is that you can't accept that your roommate had killed herself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's all it was. The monster, a monster didn't get her. And she says, well, no, I heard it. I can hear it at night. You know, you have to believe me. And the doctor's like, monsters aren't real. Yeah. Do you think the ghost of her, the, the vision of her son is actually a ghost? I think they, um, I think the possibility is there, like in this universe, that yeah, he totally could be. Mm-hmm. Mm. Just because the way he's made up looks like how they make up ghosts, like yeah. he's very like washed out. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think there is a line here that they, there is almost a good discussion, I think, in this episode that didn't happen about, well, you know, how many people in this universe have had contact with the supernatural and then have you know ended up somewhere here because either they weren't believed or um you know they saw something that they couldn't cope with you Mm -hmm. know so how how does the the closeness of the supernatural in this universe affect people and i think that actually could have been quite interesting i kind of see it with martin a little bit but also like maybe this woman is just seeing a ghost of her son maybe she doesn't actually have a mental illness Maybe she, you know. Yeah. And then no one, because that, that could be a thing in this universe. That's very true. And she, yeah, it would be written off as a hallucination, mm-hmm. auditory yeah. and visionary. Like, so yeah. Hmm. That, that would have been a such, yeah. They, they actually missed an opportunity. And I don't think they ever do come back to this conversation. No, I don't think so. And, and it, it shows, you know, if you were actually have some kind, if you actually went to someone about your supernatural experiences, because Sam and Dean here, which we're going to talk about in a minute, are very blunt about what's happening to them. Mm-hmm. And they're just immediately admitted. So right. it's like, okay, yeah. So like, what if someone has to spin the horns? <laughs> like, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's quite wild, really. Yeah. So it's then later on in the night and we see Susan, who's a patient, um, on the bed and clearly awake and she's she's watching the vent in the ceiling mm-hmm. and she sees the screw so slowly unscrew yeah and she's yelling out trying to ask for help um another patient sees her at the window mm-hmm. and again it's these this facility is a little dismissive because yeah. as a nurse it says oh they're starting early because once she starts screaming then other patients mm-hmm. start screaming and another patient sees her and then suddenly she's dragged away. Yeah. And as the nurse comes down the hallway to check, finally check on Susan, mm-hmm. she's on the floor and it appears that she has uh, also killed herself. Yeah. So this, with the vent, 
and the Screws is almost a shot-for-shot shot remake of the X-Files episode with the, like, the, the scariest X-Files episode with the person who can fit through vents and they find the stretched out fingerprint. Oh, I think I've seen that one. Yeah, because he does the same thing. He unscrews the mm -hmm. vent. So knowing who the monster is, I know, I know I'm getting ahead of myself. Knowing who the monster is, why? Right? <laughs> well, so she, she, the, the monster does explain it is like the, the chemicals that the brain emits, like the adrenaline and dopamine and stuff. So uh, maybe it's that, like getting the, you know, all the... Getting them really what scared happened? before she mm -hmm. feels... Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, fine. I will, I will go with that because otherwise it was just silly. And they, like, they, they, met, they also referenced the X-Files in this episode. So I think they knew what they were doing. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. But so what's really funny about that as well... Well, I guess we don't know how much time has passed between, you know, the nurse actually coming to check on a patient. That's true. And this because, like that monster then has to go back up into the vent and screw the things back on? Or does she just go... I mean, if you haven't watched the episode already before listening to this, yeah. sorry. But the nurse is going to have a key, right? So maybe she could just screw it back in and just walk out the door. I mean, that's true. Up. Yeah, so you're right. Maybe she like, sets up this whole thing to like real freak someone out, for the extra like chemicals, and then mm -hmm. just waltzes out. Or like, you know, you could open the door and be like, help! Like, look, and like, you run there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we start, you know, after that, we start off this episode with Sam and Dean in the doctor's office, the original doctor. Um, and <laughs> he says, You refer to me by Dr. Barba in Chicago. And he was like, isn't that a children's book about an elephant named Barba? Yes, there is. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, there is. It's, it's a really strange book. I don't know if you've ever read it, but it's about an elephant who leaves his elephant family and goes and lives in the city and learns to, like, wear clothes and, like, be a person. And then, like, goes back to his elephant family, but they think, that he's too fancy for them now. It's really weird. <laughs> it, I, I think I'm remembering when we, it was odd. Um, anyway, so Dean has brought Sam to this doctor. And this conversation is like... It, this This bit is probably the best bit of the episode. Yeah, I, I agree. Think. Um, because Dr. Filler asks, you know, to ask Sam, like, how are you? And he says, you know, I'm fine. I mean, I'm okay. Like, I guess I'm a little depressed. Any idea why? Probably because I started the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Just nonchalantly talking about starting the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, it must be really freeing for them to be able to do this to like a normal person. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to say what I want. So he's like, well, yeah, I mean, I killed this demon, Lilith. And I accidentally freed Lucifer from hell. So now he's topside and we're trying to stop him. And um, Dr. Fuller's like trying to find like some kind of ally in Dean. Um, cause he's like, who, who is? And sounds like, oh, you know, me and him and this one angel. Oh, you mean like a, like an angel on your shoulder? No, no, his name's Castiel. He wears a trench coat. And then Dean's like, you know, see what I mean? This kid's been beating himself up out for months, but the apocalypse wasn't his fault. <laughs> 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 so he's like, no, it was this demon Ruby. Like, she got addicted to demon blood, and near the end, he was practically chugging the stuff. My brother's not evil. He was just... high. He said, so can you fix him up so we can get back to travelling around the country and hunting monsters? And um, the doctor's like, oh, okay. And he, like, calls through and says, you know, cancel my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a nurse who kind of leads him down a hallway and says that they're both being kept in, including Dean. Dean's like, surprise, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but then they, Sam and Dean, like, smile at each other, like, we did it. So, yeah. like, you know, it's a ruse. Like yeah, like, give each other a thumbs up. <laughs> mm hmm Exactly. And then they both get checkups by the same nurse. You know, they she does their blood pressure. Um, like, Dean tries to make, like, a joke with her about Nurse Ratchet, and and she seems just, like, really nice, because she's like, okie dokie. Mm hmm And they both, yeah, they both also get, like, presumably prostate exams, because they make a whole, like, deal out of it. 
um, when they see each other again. <laughs> so the reason why this made me laugh so much, like this thing in particular made me laugh so much, is because it sh- clearly shows that they don't go get physicals very often. That's true. Because as, you know, they're both in, well, Dean in his 30s, every year now would have his prostate checked. Like, that's just what they do. Like, it's not that big a deal. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, they did, they don't go get themselves checked out. Yeah, you're right. So they are uncomfortable with the uh, <laughs> process. Yep. I also want to say, I don't know what it is, but like Sam in Scrubs just looks ridiculous. Because he's a giant Why? of a man. I don't know. Yeah. Like, it's just sort of, I don't, I think the Scrubs they found him were just huge. Like, mm-hmm. and they just hang off him in this. But I don't know <laughs> what it is. He kind of looks like Lurch or something. <laughs> yeah, he, they just, I don't know if it's because he's wearing like one block colour, but he just looks even taller than he normally is. <laughs> and just something about it. I don't know. It's really, I think it's like the robe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the robe is the, because it's kind of flappy around the arms. That's the bit. <laughs> the actual scrubs are fine. Like, mm-hmm. just the white t shirt and the blue, like, trouser is fine. It's the robe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Sam and Dean meet back up again and they discuss what happened to them. Um, but brush it off. Well, at least they know they're healthy now, I guess, because. Yeah. I mean, presumably she's actually a nurse, otherwise how did she get like hired? I mean this place seems dodgy, so they've just walked in one day and like, I'm a nurse, I work here now. You know, Maybe. Put on some scrubs and upside down watch and <laughs> 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 So yeah, they look around um the lounge and they're talking about the person they're here to meet. So they say Martin saved dad's ass more times than we can count, he's a great hunter. And he's like, oh, you know, he was until Albuquerque. Um, they never say what Al- Al- blah, blah, blah. Albuquerque is, though. No, they didn't say what happened. I, I hate that. a missing scene or something where they actually explain what happened in Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, and then Sam basically explains why they're here, because last episode they shot the devil, it didn't work, and now they're just on a normal hunt, so this needs an explanation. Mm-hmm. so he's like oh you know I think it's best we keep busy <laughs> and yeah. then says to Dean like the last few weeks you've been kind of worrying me and Dean's like kind of you know typically getting angry about it and says you know hey, Dean Ellen and Joe dying yeah it was a freaking tragedy okay but I'm not gonna wallow in it Dean, you always do this you can't just keep this crap in <laughs> <laughs> and he just says watch me and then finds Martin Dean learns nothing in this episode because you think about the conversation he has with Sam at the end of this yeah, I don't yeah. Know. it's exactly this. It's exactly this. He learns zero things. <laughs> Absolutely zero things. And he's just like passing on his bad habit. Yeah, come on, Dean. And I would argue that De- whatever happens to Dean in this episode seems worse than what happens to Sam. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, Sam seems to uh, almost kind of deal with it. And then Dean is, no, he does not deal with it. Nope. Anyway, so they go find Martin, and he clearly hasn't seen them for a few years. He's like, wow, you boys got big. Um, And they all sit down around the table. And Martin does say, like, you know, in the olden days, I could have... In the olden days? In the the old (laughs) days, I could have taken care of this with my hands tied behind my back. But now, um, you know, he, he doesn't know what it is. The hospital's had five deaths in four months. The doctors keep calling it suicides, but they're wrong. He's not seen it, but it's like he kind of knows through like a hunter's instinct, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of the patients have seen it, and Dean says, are they reliable? And he's like, oh, sure, why wouldn't they be? He's like, okay, fine. But they might be. You don't know. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. It's tough, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, so Martin says, like, you know, I know you think I'm not all with it. But, like, you wouldn't be wrong, but I wouldn't have called you if there wasn't something I thought was here. Sam asks if he's looked at any of the bodies, and he says no. And he, like, really stutters around. Like, I don't look at, like, go around dead bodies anymore. Something really bad has happened to him. I do wish they had kind of mentioned it. Like, what was it? What happened to you? What happened to you, Martin? Because, like, Cause like what, what was so bad that a, hun- a seasoned hunter, mm-hmm. like, good enough to save... Well, I say good enough to save John... Mm-hmm. what hunter hasn't saved john <laughs> true that um but good enough to save john 
can no longer hunt and it can no longer be around dead bodies. Like, mm-hmm. what monster... I mean... For us, it would be masked vampires. <laughs> Damn those masked vampires! Yeah, that's true. They are the source of a lot of, lot of my trauma, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it must have been recent because... He talks about demons here. Oh, no. Do you know what? I'm not getting into this conversation about when hunters knew about demons because I know they like screwed the pooch on it. I know they messed it up. They messed it up. Yeah. I'm going to stop thinking yeah. about it. It's going to take it's, stop it taking up space in my brain because it clearly <laughs> wasn't in the writers. <laughs> Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> well, so, you know, saying that, though, this is season five. So it has been at least two years okay, since fine. the gates of home, hell opened. So maybe, okay. but you're right. It's no. <laughs> <laughs> so the the original doctor guy comes in and he's like, "Oh, let's go do a group session." And he takes Martin and Sam. And when Dean goes to go with them, he's like, "No, the the relationship." Well, you have your brother seems dangerously codependent. I think a little time apart will do you both good. <laughs> Which, yeah, he he did call that one out. Mm-hmm. So Sam and Martin go to a group session, and um, nobody wants to talk. But there's the the guy who saw Susan die wants to talk about it. You know, he's saying like, "I'd like to talk about the monster hunting us," and it's clear that he's brought this up before because the doctor is very really dismissive of him, and. He says, like, oh, you know, I saw when it killed Susan. Obviously, Sam and Martin are paying attention to this. And mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and that, when he's trying to explain, another patient says, When it killed Susan. I did, too. It had big lobster claws. No, it didn't. Yeah, and it was uh, an alien, like, on X-Files. Stop it! Obviously, like, the other patients are not helping his situation because they're, make, like, kind of adding to his story things that aren't, they didn't see or are not true. Mm-hmm. Um. And then eventually the doctor just stops him and says, look, do you need me to call the orderlies? And kind of basically shouts him down, really. I, I hate that. He's like, oh, can you behave? And he's like, behave. He's like, this is a grown man. Don't treat him like a child. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do. Dr. Fuller gets what he deserves in this episode, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> bad doctor. Yeah. So back with Dean, he's playing checkers by himself and he's like laughing and shouting, king me. And this attractive female doctor walks up to him and um, calls herself Dr. Erica Cartwright and says that she's been assigned to him, which makes sense because the other doctor's looking after Sam. He's like, oh, you're my doctor. <laughs> How coy. <laughs> Dean and this doctor are, there's some heavy flirting going on. <laughs> Knowing who she is, and we've said already, like, she's not real, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so is this is this Dean's like are we seeing into Dean's idea of like a really I guess what he likes in a woman slightly older and brunette maybe Maybe. and very intelligent yeah very intelligent that's true (laughs) I've actually got some questions for you what a coincidence I've got some for you too well then quid pro quo Clarice so she asks how many hours of sleep a night does he get and he says three or four every couple of nights oh god this sounds like hell it does. Oh, hate Gosh. it. Um, he asks about the suicides here, and she just said they're tragic. Um, he asks, "Have you noticed anything strange, like black smoke or sulfur?" And she's like, "No, no. What's that? If it was that, then it would be demons." Um, she asks him, "How many drinks does he have a week?" And he says, "Well, seven times a day, somewhere in the mid fifties, <laughs> which is Dean." That's bad. That's bad. Um, and she's like, he asked about cold spots and things, and she said, no, I don't think there is. And she asked about long-term relationships. More than two months. And he says, none. <laughs> Never. And, um, yeah, you know, have the patients seen anything weird? And she's like, all the time. And then her final question or statement is, let's talk about your father. Why did it cut there? I mean, I know. Why. We needed to hear that conversation. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yeah, cards on the table, Dr. Cartwright isn't real. So mm-hmm. obviously, he doesn't learn any new information because Dean doesn't know any new information. Right. Um, 
But it's interesting that these are the things that he's focusing on. So sleep, <laughs> <laughs> drinking, mm-hmm. relationships, and John. <laughs> I mean, these are all things that we have pointed out in the past yeah, that he definitely. has issue with. Mm-hmm. Um, though I thought his relationship with Cassie was a bit longer than two months, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it was just like a fling, but like a serious fling, you know? Mm. I think maybe. But again, they forget things, so. That's true. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Again, like we said before, the drinking thing is an interesting one. And like the fact that if he is stuck somewhere like this, like um, when he, they were in prison and when like they're here, like who knows how long they were here, but it feels like it was like kind of like a week or maybe two. Mm-hmm. Dean never has any effects of not drinking. Whereas if he was drinking as much as he stays here, he would, he would be. And I wonder if it's... No, I was gonna say I wonder if he's like he's putting that on a little bit, mm. but I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. But again, they didn't want to address it in the show, which is why I didn't see it. But it would have added again added an interesting aspect to when they do get stuck places. <laughs> you yeah, know? and when they're away on hunts and things like that, like mm-hmm. what does he do? So. Dean and Sam meet back up again in a like walking down a hallway and chat about what happened to them. Um, Sam relays the fact that this guy saw a creature and that we should talk to him. Um, and Dean really wants to leave like pretty soon. I think the whole conversation he had about John is not sitting well, even though it was a conversation he had in his own head. But that's also very on brand. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dean turns around and there's a, a girl called Wendy and she just like kisses him out of the blue. Mm-hmm. And um Dean's actually all kind of for it, I guess, which is also... Oh, Andrew Dab, like, what is, what is your actual problem? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't like this, but I understand why they put it in, because she's a red herring. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Fine. So th- they've made this same joke two weeks in a row, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. So th- they had... Because Sam says, you know, you, you can't. You can't hit that. I hate that phrasing, but... And Dean's like, well, I'm so torn. We well, said basically the same thing about Joe last week. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Or two weeks ago, yeah. Yeah. Just, I don't know, Dean, just... I know long-term relationships are apparently not your thing, but, like, also just something slightly healthier would be awesome. Just something slightly yeah. healthier. It's a little like... bit... <laughs> It's not good for her either, because she's there for this exact reason, probably. Exactly, clearly, right, obviously. So yeah, let's not take advantage of the girl in the psychiatric hostel, thanks. Also, I did say this out loud while I was watching it, why is it a mixed ward? Yeah, that is kind of weird. Yeah, that doesn't happen. No. No. Um, anyway, so Sam comes up. They, they've later been locked up, so like a little bit of time has passed. Sam comes out and he's got like a, of his cell and he's got a lockpick in his hand. So kind of showing they can get where they want in this place because they can just pick the locks. Which... <laughs> where do they hide those? Well, he used a spring from his bed. Oh, That's he did? Okay, fine. I was like... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they had the cavity search, so... That's true. They would have had to struggle <laughs> to get the lock pits through that. <laughs> hate myself. Um, yeah, I guess, like, they could have had stuff... Yeah, you're right, they had stuff stashed anyway. Martin's probably pretty resourceful. Um, mm. So they go down to Ted's room, um, but unfortunately he's already, like, screaming at the door. And as Sam's trying to pick the lock, Dean's shouting him, like, hurry, hurry! And then she Sam looks and he's like, back off, Dean! And I quite enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then by the time they get in unfortunately Ted is dead he's hanging from the ceiling so he's also yeah. got got by the monster that he has so um, they are at, in the morgue and they are investigating Ted's body mm-hmm. and Sam's like feeling around his head and then he feels like a divot on, by his neck or mm-hmm. like the back of his head uh he then gets like a long 
q-tip and like poke oh it mm, <laughs> it made me feel so gross <laughs> and uh basically it goes all the way to the brain yeah sam's like oh well let me go you know check it out because he sees a bone saw it's just like laying around <laughs> and he tells uh dean to go keep watch so in the hallway dean's just like looking around um but here's the saw go off and like looks disgusted yeah um inside of the morgue sam takes the top of ted's head off and like you see this like black <laughs> pancake that he pulls out of his head <laughs> and it's the the brain that has just been sucked dry of its juices um dean goes back into the room because somebody's coming a nurse is coming as so th the only reason why this works mm -hmm. is because it's the nurse from earlier pudding she, he act like he acts crazy but like this is not what he's in there for no it's, I, don't, I don't know like i don't know how i feel about it like how many years on later it's just weird man yeah i don't say sound effects i wasn't paying attention okay fine but i'll go back and listen <laughs> but i feel like now that you've said that there probably was which makes it worse it does yeah um yeah so i mean it, it's like can are they not, well are they not allowed underwear oh yeah because like when he pulls down the pants <laughs> it's just or his trousers it's just the blue scrubs i think underpants makes this better like i'm not gonna be but if implied it's not right yeah it's, it's very weird such a choice it is i mean i i feel like oh, this sounds really bad. i feel like andrew Dad generally writes Dean as like re way more. He he writes him so differently to other people, and you see it later on in the seasons as well when he's like showrunner. I just feel like Dean's character gets a bit lost. Mm -hmm. But I mean, this is something I feel he probably would would do. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah, it's a um... yeah. I but at the same time, what else? You, they see they've gotten out of worse situations than this mm -hmm. so to rely on this like weird stereotype mm -hmm. it just like you didn't have to do it that way well sam's already hidden the body he's done the work mm -hmm. they literally could have said oh yeah we're hunting monsters <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's a ghost yeah. in here we heard a ghost like mm -hmm. that's exactly like you said that's what they've been admitted for i think ghosts are real so, exactly. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. So the the pudding thing, not as fun as it once was, unfortunately, which yeah. kind of sucks. Yeah. But there you go. Um. I get the, so there's another clown bit, but I'm like, why is not why is Sam not having some adverse reaction to this? Has they have they forgotten that he's afraid of clowns? Has it been? It has been mentioned that he's afraid of clowns, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. Those original Gacy's. I painted those. And like he mouths to Martin, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like that. I don't know why, but I really like that. that was, um, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam explains that, you know, the whatever this monster is, it's sucking out people's brains and then using the deaths to make it look like suicides. Mm -hmm. um, and Martin has kind of an idea of what it could be. Martin tells them that it's a wraith. They've come across a wraith before, right? Or is this the first time? I think this is. I think this is the first time. Yeah, I think okay. this is the first time. Also, like I'd like to say kudos to Martin's picture. There was no reason for him to draw that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is it with hunters and being like kind of good artists? <laughs> she does. Oh, I just can't think about any drawing in Supernatural without thinking about Sam's really good drawing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he did a really good job with the tree, just not with the 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 tattooed armed man. Whatever. <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. <laughs> but uh, so they they're asking like, how do we go about and kill this? And the only way to do that is silver. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as soon as you touch it to their skin, the skin crackles, 
which is good news. Uh, the bad news is that they can pass as humans. Um, so it could be anybody in the place, but the only way to find them is to find a mirror and look at them in the mirror. Mm -hmm. um, I guess what I was kind of confusing them, confusing a wraith with a siren, because it was exactly the same thing. Yeah, and shifters as well, their eyes look funny mm -hmm. on mirrors and films. So, yeah, there's a few, few monsters that do this. Yeah. Um, and obviously uh, the the hospital is a good hunting ground because, you know, nobody would believe that patients are seeing monsters. Mm -hmm. So later on, Dean is at like one of those mirrors that allow you to see round corners. Yeah. And he's checking everybody out to make sure that they're not a wraith. And Dr. Cartwright comes up and um, they basically go through what what he's doing mm. um and she then asks why you and she's dean says why me what and she says why do you have to hunt monsters why not some let someone else do it can't find anybody else that dumb it's my job and somebody's gonna save people's asses yours included so is there a quota how many people do you have to save all of them she then asks you know how how are you gonna save everybody yeah and he doesn't give an answer because he doesn't really want to tell her. Yeah. Um, and she's like, well, you know, I've heard, you, you know, I've heard a weirder, whatever you're going to say. And Dean's like, well, you know, it's the end of the world. It's a damn biblical apocalypse. If I don't stop it and save everybody, then no one will. We all die. Mm -hmm. The doctor is like, you know, the apocalypse or no apocalypse, monsters or no monsters. That's a crushing weight on your shoulders to feel like six billion people's lives depend on you how do you get up in the morning and Dean's like that's a good question it's really interesting because this is a conversation he's having with himself like do you yeah. know I, I just I'm looking back at this this is good I, I appreciate what they've done here it's not actually that insightful I don't think into Dean's character like we already know he feels the need to save everybody yeah he doesn't at the moment know how he's going to do it because their plan failed mm -hmm. and Yes, he feels a crushing weight <laughs> on his shoulders. Um, yeah. And, you know, he doesn't cope. Then he just said, like, how do you get up in the morning? Like, he he doesn't cope. He doesn't sleep. He no. drinks a lot. Like, he doesn't deal with his daddy issues. So, I mean... It was the first thought that came to mind when he says, how do you get up in the morning? It's like, well, he doesn't go to sleep. That's true. Yeah. So you don't have to get up if you don't go to sleep. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you can never feel that weight because it's just always there. Yeah. I always wonder how many times over their years of knowing each other, Cass put Dean to sleep because he didn't sleep. Probably a lot. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, this, this is basically Dean having a conversation with himself about the crushing responsibility that he feels for everyone's lives on the planet. But like mm -hmm. we said, he shouldn't be worried because it, it's only America. Like, that's, that's way less people... Right. <laughs> that's what like one billion yeah <laughs> still a lot of people but like it's not six yeah <laughs> um then the doc the dr fuller the the main doctor walks by and says hello and then dean looks into the mirror and sees that the sees the decaying face and mm -hmm. he's like aha he's the guy um sam has managed to find silver plated mm -hmm. weapons rather than full silver but it will have to do and as they're having this conversation wendy walks up to mm -hmm. them and dean's like no 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 not today you know keep on walking but instead of going after dean she goes after sam mm -hmm. and she says i want him now he's larger okay yep and dean says you know he shrugs at Sam, says you've had worse. It's like, actually, he hasn't, so yeah, stop that. <laughs> Sam actually picks, like, you know, women that probably would do him some good if they weren't going to die, apart from Ruby. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> That's Ruby, yeah. yeah. No, I, as I said it, I was like, that's who he's thinking of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ruby 2.0, at least, who's the one he's end up sleeping with. Mm-hmm was technically a coma patient that had just died, so... Yeah, let's not talk about the ethicalness of vessels. 
<laughs> Not everyone here is clear uh, morally right. Yeah. Um, so Sam hands out all of the the letter openers, mm -hmm. even one to Martin, and he's like, "No, I can't do this." Like, and Dean's like, "Well, you, you have to because we have to get past security, get past orderlies." And then gets the boss man is going to suck a start to finish, but we need backup. Um, but Martin walks away. Um, Sam and says, we know what happens in Albuquerque. Well, we don't. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, because the, the only explanation we get. You don't know the half of it. God, I used to be just like you two. I used to think I was invincible. And then well, I found out I'm not. What happened in Albuquerque? Oh, is is the whole like Budapest thing all over again? Yeah. Exactly. In, but the thing is, when you found out what happened in Budapest, it just wasn't that interesting. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 That's the problem with like setting these things up like this. It's like when you actually find out, you're like, oh. I mean, I guess Martin is kind of like a mirror to Sam and Dean because he's saying like, oh, I used to think I was invincible with all my implied like all my plans would work everything would go fine and mm -hmm. actually for sam and dean they've just pulled off this big plan two people died and it, then it didn't work and now they have nothing else left so what's mm. the dividing line between them and him you know why haven't they given up yet like he has mm -hmm. yeah i guess so probably reading too much into it to be honest and i mean it could have <sighs> I, I guess they're also trying to keep some of the stuff under wraps because they literally could have been like, okay, yeah, you found out you were in like you you weren't invincible, mm -hmm. but we also went up to up against Lucifer and survived. Yeah, yeah. Like you can stand up to this wraith. Yeah, yeah. I they probably don't want to tell Martin about the literal apocalypse. If he's already having yeah. a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, then Martin walks away, you know, apologizing, saying that he can't do it. Sam and Dean break into the doctor's office, but they only find his keys, and so they assume he's still in the building. Uh, they split up, and Sam comes across the doctor and fights him mm -hmm. and, like, manages to cut his arm with the letter opener then two orderlies come over and he just like beats the crap out of them when all of this was happening I was like well of course he can do this because he can take down like SWAT teams <laughs> like a couple of orderlies is gonna be nothing <laughs> always bringing that up like yeah it's so true they, they like must have been like kind of overpowered Sam like he's so badass <laughs> right um and just before S Sam can kill the doctor Martin stops him and says, look, his arm's not burning or the cut's not burning. Um, it's not him. And then Sam drops the, the blade. And I mean, that's... Sam should have noticed that. I think that's the implication here. Sam should have noticed, right. but he was too, like, seeing red. Mm -hmm. yes. It's the same with those, again, I think we mentioned last week, those demons who didn't flash out. He didn't right. even notice. Like, it didn't even really register very well. I think mm -hmm. he made like a passing comment on it, but then was like, fine, whatever, they're just demons. So I I kind of like that continuation of, you know, just get the job done and like with mm -hmm. not looking at the finer details of things. So a lot of time has passed and we see Sam laying on a bed. This is, it's called lounging, not laying, <laughs> lounging on a bed. Mm -hmm. This is quite... Remin like this looks like the exact same room almost that Sam's in when after Cass breaks the wall in his head. Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's exactly the same. I mean, it's another like psychiatric ward, so I'm not surprised. It's just like the door is in the same place and stuff. Like it looks almost exactly. The same. Oh yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this was. I would not be surprised if this was the same place as the prison episode because even that looks very similar that's true actually yeah they just use the same set too. I, yeah. <laughs> I do know that's well. <laughs> so Dean walks in and he's asked like are you okay and Sam's like no no I'm not okay I'm awesome <laughs> <laughs> they give you something oh yeah they, they gave me everything it, it's 
Spectacular. <laughs> but then Sam kind of recollects himself and says, like, the doctor wasn't a wraith. And Sam's like, well, you know, I know. Um, but it's like, I don't understand. Like, I saw it in the mirror, it wasn't human. I will say, Dara's facial expressions of like, hi, Sam, hilarious. Yeah. 100% hilarious. I love it so much. And drunk Sam, like both of them. Yeah. Are just, it's great. It's yeah. So good. So good. <laughs> so Sam's like, well, maybe you're seeing things, like maybe you're going crazy. And seems like, well, I'm not crazy. And then Sam says, well, you, you've been at least half crazy for a long time since you got back from hell or since before that even. I mean, we're in a mental hospital. Maybe you finally cracked. You know, maybe you are now for real crazy. Um, I feel this sticks in Dean's head for he's that bit because I think it kind of affects what happens to him. Mm, later on. I agree. Yeah. Is that what you think of Dean, Sam? You know, that he's just a little bit off. I mean, yeah, he doesn't have a good coping skill. So you're right. He should be getting help. Um, mm -hmm. Dean's like, okay, I made a mistake. That's all, you know, I'll go find the thing. And then Sam very seriously like puts his hand on his shoulder. He's like, look, look at me. Because you're my brother. And I still love you. <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> boop, <laughs> on his nose. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. It's nice, it's mm. nice to see this side of Sam. He's always so serious. Yeah. Especially in this season. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe he needs more of this medication more often. Yeah, just help, help him out a little bit. <laughs> so Dean walks down, he's walking down the hallway and he sees Dr. Cartwright and she's like, you missed our session, which it implies that he's been having regular conversations with her. And he's like, oh, well, you know, pe people are dying. And she said, people die all the time. And, and Dean's like, you know, just let me get on with what I'm doing. Um, and then... He's like, you know, I'm fine, okay. And he like finally like he looks at her and is like, I'm fine. And she says, Come on, even you don't believe that. All this pressure that you're putting yourself under, all this guilt, it's killing you. You can't save everybody. You can't. Hell, these days you can't save anybody, Dean. So she sort of changes her demeanour between that as well. And mm -hmm. I'd kind of forgotten that she was imaginary and I was like, Why is the demon here? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought she was I a monster. The same thing too. Yeah. yeah. You got Ellen and Joe killed. You shot Lucifer, but you couldn't gank him. Which should be a clue that this is in his head because no one else uses the word gank. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> and so you couldn't stop Sam from killing Lilith, and oh yeah, you broke the first seal. All you do is fail. Did you really think that you, Dean Winchester, with a GED and a give him hell attitude, were going to beat the devil? It must be so that line's coming back to kick him in the ass. <laughs> right. And it must be so weird to hear your own internal monologue like talk to you from outside. <laughs> oh god, I would hate that. I know. <laughs> Horrible. Um so there's, there's like an, an like an orderly like doing like something in the corridor too. Or Dean's having this like full on shouting match with this doctor now. And he's like, Do you want to like settle down? And um you know, Dean's shouting like, who are you? How do you know what you're doing? Tell me who you are. And eventually the order says like, settle down. Like, um, like really shouting at him. Who is she? Who? Are you blind her? Pal, there's nobody there. And then obviously it like zooms out and there's nobody there. Um, and Dean just sort of walks off, not looking very happy with himself. He passes a mirror as he walks away and he sees that the orderly and the nurse look like wraiths and then he passes like some patients they also look like wraiths and basically like, everybody he's seeing in the mirror so he doesn't know what to, what to do mm -hmm. back with sam this is the bit that really like turned me against the doctor and i was like i'm done i'm done with this guy mm -hmm. um so sam's in his room and, and the doctor who he attacked comes to see him and he says, like, look, I really want to apologize. Like, I feel horrible. I thought you were a monster. Which is, again, the doctor knows that's why he's here. I, I know right. it must be real scary to, like, be attacked by a patient as well. Like, I do understand that. Um, but also, he should have some kind of, like, wanting to help this. But I guess, I don't know, it's a hard one. But 
So Sam saying, you know, it doesn't matter. After what happened last night, I've realised there is no such thing as monsters. You know, trying to say that he's made a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Fuller is says, well, you know, monsters are least your problems. People can learn to live with delusions. But the anger I saw in you, you hurt those two men and you were going to kill me. The look in your eyes when you came after me, it was like you were barely human, like a man possessed. Which, pfft. Yeah. I get the wording. I get why the, that's the wording. But, mm-hmm. um, but the funny thing is that he, when he, his eyes turned black in season four, mm-hmm. he, he himself is the demon. He is not being possessed by a demon. That's true. But like, because he's Lucifer's vessel, I feel like... There is that too. Yeah, there's the implication there that he could be possessed by something worse. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sam asks, like, very sincerely for a second chance. And the, the doctor does agree that he can go to the day room with supervision. But he says, if there's one more outburst, I'll transfer you to a facility that's equipped to handle violent patients. They will be far, far less forgiving. The thing is, like, this conversation could have gone better. Like, I feel like, yeah, fine. It's supernatural. It's, like, dramatic. But actually, mm-hmm. in terms of, like, you know, I don't know. I mean, this this does feel like... So, if if you have seen Girl Interrupted or mm-hmm. what the one who flew the cuckoo's nest, any of those, like, 70s to, like, early 90s mm. um, psychiatric movies... Mm there the doctors and nurses really don't care about their patients in yeah. those movies and they are very authoritarian and very my way or the highway kind mm-hmm. of thing um so they're trying i feel like they are trying to emulate that in this episode but like i'm pretty sure in 2009 or now this is 2010 mm. the <laughs> hospitals are Hopefully a little bit better than that. <laughs> Good hospitals would be, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're, yeah, you're right. That, that's what they're trying to do. I've never watched Girl Interrupted, so I should probably watch it at some point. It's good. I actually really enjoyed it. Oh, okay. Um, Misha's in it. Yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> I wonder that's why they too chose the, this episode name. So Sam does go to the day room and... He sees Dean, but he's, Dean's really almost like catatonically like checked. He's just not looking, he's not looking good. Mm-hmm. Um, when he goes to say hi to him, Sam's like, what's wrong? And Dean says, it's not the demon blood, Sam. It never was. Like the problem was you. It was always you. The lies, your arrogance, the black spot on your soul. So like, and then all the other patients start shouting at him. Like, we're all going to die because of you. It's your fault. Like, you killed us. Pathetic freak. Like, you evil son of a bitch. Um, you know, <laughs> grow up and die is an interesting one. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. Um, so, like, Sam starts to, like, lash out at the other patients. And then it kind of zooms out again. And we see that he's just sort of, like, fighting the air. There's no one there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a little rhyme. Um, <laughs> so the orderlies come. And again, he, like, punches them as they're trying to calm him down. And so he gets dragged off. And again, yeah, we see Dean sat quietly now rather than shouting at him. So he obviously wasn't real either. Mm-hmm. We, and oh yeah, Dean is like very much inwardly saying like, what's happening? What's happening? He's poor Dean in this episode too. Like they're both having a real hard time. Yeah. So we see Martin um, and he's asleep in his bed, but he has his door open and it's Dean. Um, Martin hasn't lost his old hunter reflexes because he does have the silver tipped blade under his pillow or mm-hmm. the plated one um, oh my god I hated this so much Dean's like it's me Dean <laughs> <laughs> I love that I'm so cute um, and he's basically explaining that Sam's gone to lockdown that he's feeling like he's going absolutely crazy because he's seeing things he's hearing things that they both are that he's like crazy is the clue you know that they shouldn't be this shouldn't be happening to them mm-hmm. um and he he just keeps zoning out during this conversation too and like martin has to re-get his attention he says i uh, you know the things that me and sam have done the stuff we've seen we're en- we're gonna end up going guano 
eventually. It's interesting, kind of phrase. Probably end up like a couple of drooling nutbags. <laughs> no offense. None taken. But he said, but him and me freaking out on the same day, it's got to be the monster. And the, uh, Martin says the monster, and then Dean's like, where? <laughs> <laughs> and then Dean's kind of realizing if it doesn't just feed on the insane, what if it makes people insane? You know, is that possible? Does it seem real? And Martin agrees that it makes sense. Um, you know, Dean thinks they got infected somehow. Um, and then he says, <laughs> so like, you know something? And he's like, maybe. Maybe it's the ghost of my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, no. The no. monster I mean the monster is the ghost of your dad. Like that is true. Like it is true. Yeah. But not in this yeah. case. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, that, that that was a good line, I thought. I yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a little throwaway moment. I was like, that really sums up Dean's whole experience in life. <laughs> Maybe it is the ghost of your dad, Dean. Yeah, maybe maybe it is. Maybe you should deal with it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Salt and burn that sucker. <laughs> <laughs> so Martin's like, no, focus, Dean. Um, and he's like, right, the wraith, the wraith. It poisoned us. Like, yeah, maybe with venom, you know, by touch or venom or saliva. And then he's like, oh, wait, Wendy. So Wendy kissed him and Sam. So maybe it's her. Mm -hmm. So Martin and Dean go to Wendy's room. Um... Dean's walking weird because he's trying not to step on the cracks in the floor. Like, he's going through a whole host of different issues during this bit. Um, yeah, like, there was too many. I like this. Well, <laughs> I can get this one because I think Dean has some sort of almost, like, I would say OCD tendencies. Like, the tidiness, that's very generalised. But, like, the way... It's not just in that, but in his, like, thought patterns and things. Like, if, you know, if the self-sacrifice and things, I would say would almost definitely that kind of tendency. I'm, I'm analysing here, like, I'm a psychiatrist. I am not. <laughs> yeah. I, the, other, the other thought that I had, which is really, really bad. Mm -hmm. So, you, obviously, there's the whole, like, don't step on a crack because you break your mother's back. Yeah. And I was like, well, your mum's dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're back this. at <laughs> Like, I wouldn't have even been surprised if they put that line in. Whereas, like, yeah. oh, you know, the might have been being like, well, she's dead, so, you know. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, but these are all supposed to be sourced from their own mind, right? So, mm -hmm. and I mean, Dean was in hell for a long time, so who knows what's, what's brewing. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So they get to, to Wendy's room, and unfortunately, her wrists have been cut. Um, and the nurse is there that originally dealt with them, and she looks like a wraith. Um, Dean says, is this real? And she, the, the wraith has this, like... <laughs> I'm going to call it a narwhal tusk, because that's what it looks like. <laughs> that comes I, was, out I was calling it a stinger, but yeah. That's pretty good. I quite like that. Yeah, <laughs> pretty better. A proboscis, right? You know, like a fly. Yeah. Um, she's there and like it, it sits at her wrist and she licks it. Oh, it is sugar. It's very real. Yeah, so they found the wraith. It was the nurse. They found the wraith. Yep. Dean and the wraith start fighting each other. Um, and Martin tries to help, but the blade gets like flung from his hand. Mm -hmm. Um, Martin manages to like kind of step up and cuts her hand and she yells and like runs away. Um, and Dean sort of slides to the floor, kind of disoriented. And Martin's trying to get his attention because Wendy's actually still alive, mm -hmm. luckily. Um, as the wraith runs away, she finds two orderlies and says that the, um, there's two patients in Wendy's room that have just attacked her. Mm -hmm. And her blood's like dripping on the floor. Uh, Dean sort of kind of his vision now is getting all fragmented and mm -hmm. like very disorienting. It's like, I found it difficult to actually watch it. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was really like, whoa, vertigo yeah. inducing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Martin's yelling at her, say, yelling at him saying that, you know, you need to get out of here and go take care of her. Mm -hmm. um, and he eventually gets to his feet and runs out the door as the two orderlies come in and restrain Martin 
Uh, Dean's having a really hard time getting down this hallway, mm -hmm. but he notices the blood drops and starts to follow those. We're then into like a padded room and yeah. Sam is like um, strapped down to the bed. Poor Sam. How many times is he strapped down? In <laughs> so, many times. so many times. So many times. And the wraith comes in and she... Hey, let me go. No, you are far too angry to be out there in the real world. The wraith kind of like... <laughs> makes fun of them. Yeah. Because you and your brother come in here talking tough about killing monsters kind of made you easy to spot and all it took was a touch and it shows when she took the blood pressure yeah. of them that that's when she infected them um and this is where she explains that like having crazy brains is mm -hmm. a real treat you know soaked in dopamine adrenaline all sorts of hormones and chemicals that make them delicious and she's like licking her fingers and all this because he's like touching his forehead where he's sweating yeah that's just gross. You're basically licking salt at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sam is a big old salt lick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Sam accuses her of causing his rage. Mm. And it's like, no, it was, that's all you. Um, I don't make the crazy. I just crank it up. Um, and she says, you build your own hell, but I, <laughs> I give you the Legos. Yes, I thought that was quite and like... me. Yeah. And then when you're right, you know, it's, I make the problems disappear. Dean, like, crashes into the room and they, again, start to fight again. Mm -hmm. Which he gets knocked over and all this and then <laughs> eventually gets pinned to the wall and, like, her narwhal tusk <laughs> stinger, what have you, like, comes out and it's, like, going for his forehead. Yeah. And it kind of extends again and he manages to get another arm out and like snaps it off which is really gross <laughs> it's like it's a bone like it's a snapped a bone <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and then dean's mind clears like his vision goes to yeah. normal again um and sam says he's still crazy and dean says not any more than usual uh because he manages to pick up the silver blade and like yeah. kill her mm -hmm. or let her open her um Dean goes over to Sam and like takes off his restraints and says, we got to get out of here. And some alarm bells start to ring and mm. they just like run. <laughs> they, just, they get out really easy. Like, they do. The next scene is just them walking out of the hospital. Like, they're, they're kind of running, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if the alarm is already going off, then you could probably just run through like an emergency exit. Yeah. They can't lock it all down because you have to get out if there's an emergency. That's true. Martin probably had a real bad time after they left because he's been found like like looking like he attacked a patient. There's also a dead nurse. Um and then these two guys are missing that he presumably knows. So like mm -hmm. poor Martin. They don't ever address that either. They're just like, yeah, I'll leave him there. Yeah. I guess that's where he wants to be though. So yeah, Sam and Dean get to the impala that they presumably hid in the woods. Um Dean says, well, it looks like Tom Cruise was right. Shrinks suck. And I don't know what that's a reference to. I have no clue it's either. It's too early 2000s, like when everyone cared <laughs> about Tom Cruise. Um, I will say this as well. Yeah. They run and leave everything that they brought with them. So did they not have like, did they bring in like burner phones and burner IDs so that they know that they could leave behind? I guess, yeah. All their clothes. Mm -hmm. Were they wearing a like, jacket? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Dean definitely wasn't wearing the jacket. No. no. Maybe it was just like, I think it was like your average army surplus jacket. <laughs> yeah, they knew they were leaving stuff behind. That's, that's fine. That's good. That's good detailing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, Dean gets, goes to get in the car and Sam's just standing at the, the trunk of the car like, I'm a sad Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so Dean goes to check on him he's like you okay and he goes no and the wraith you know she was right and he's like no she's dead let's go I need a drink or 12 um, which I guess again it, that kind of addresses the fact that he's been going without like, while they've been there mm -hmm. 
And Sam says, most of the time I can hide it, but I am angry. I'm mad at everything. I used to be mad at you and dad, then Lilith, now it's Lucifer. And I make excuses, I blame Ruby or the demon blood, but it's not their fault, it's not them, it's me. It's inside me. I am mad all the time. And I don't know why. I mean, it sounds like you need therapy for sure. Yeah, like you got you got younger sibling rage. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> and like also like Sam, let me find out what you like your life kinda sucks. Like I feel like you're allowed to be angry. Like mm -hmm. did, someone just needs to tell Sam that it's okay that he's angry. I think that's what it needs to be. Because yeah. you had a, you know, you thought you'd made it out of your, like, horrible life. You'd gone to Stanford, you got a girlfriend, everything was fine and dandy, and then it all came crashing down around you. You feel like you're entitled to be angry about that. I agree. Okay. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's not dealing with it in the best way, but the actual feeling itself is fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so Dean just steps up and goes, Stop it. So what if you are? What are you going to do? Take a leave of absence? Going to say yes to Lucifer? What? And it sounds like, well, no. You know, of course not. And Dean said, exactly. That's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to take all that crap and you're going to bury it. You're going to forget about it because that's how we keep going. And we don't end up like Martin. Are you with me? And Sam looks at him like almost in disbelief. Yeah. Like Sam just wanted him to be like, oh, it's kind of okay that you're, you know, I understand that you're angry. Mm -hmm. It's fine. That, that's pretty much what he wanted from Dean was like it's okay that you're angry doesn't mean you're a bad dude so he wanted the boop on the nose that he gave to Dean earlier exactly he wanted the boop he wanted a bro hug he, you know they've been through a lot the past few days or however long it's been um, so yeah Sam doesn't say anything and Dean just says come on man are you with me and Sam's like I'm, I'm with you and Dean's like okay let's get the hell out of here and then they leave it's it's such a bad conversation. It is. It's not even sharing their feelings like they normally are. It's literally Sam like pouring his heart out and Dean going, no, push it down. Let's go. <laughs> I, Come get drunk with me. You'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, I guess that, I guess it's a, a clue as to how Dean is coping at the moment with everything and Joe dying mm. and Ellen dying and them not having a plan for the end of the world. Like he's literally just not, thinking about it right so but we expect that from dean mm -hmm. I, also though well i don't know how long the end of the world's gonna be so maybe like you just need to repress it for a few months and then the apocalypse will happen so none of them matter anymore <laughs> <laughs> just get through the apocalypse we just need to get through it this is the problem with the with the Winchesters and why they never actually do try to bet themselves. It's like, we'll just get through this apocalypse and then we'll deal with our crap. Except it just like never ends. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break after this. Oh, what do you mean that we've just released another big bad? Yeah. We were gonna take a break. <laughs> exactly. I guess the implication is, is that once Dean dies, Sam got his, like, his crap together because he finally got a break. But he didn't because he's crying over the car. Yeah, but he's still allowed to grieve his bro. I'm, I'm okay with that, I think. <laughs> I think I'm okay with that. But like, that, I'm not saying it's good, I'm just saying it's the implication. <laughs> it's like it's finally ended, so Sam could finally get, maybe... What they should have done is just had one moment in the most montage where you see Sam go to therapy. So yeah. just one moment, and then mm -hmm. it would have made it ten times better, maybe. Who knows? But I like this episode because nobody learned anything. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, in terms of a filler episode, this was... It, was it wasn't an awful one, but it was like... It, it was very self-contained, I suppose. Like, nothing was gained and nothing was lost. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly that. Because Dean goes into this, like, everything's messed up, just repress it. Comes out of it like, yeah, I was right. And Sam goes in going, oh, I guess I'm kind of an angry dude because Lucifer told me I was an angry dude. And then at the end he's like, yeah, I'm angry. I'm not going to do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally, Lucifer has told you to stay angry because it's going to be good for him. And, like, your brother is just like, don't worry about it. Just crush it. I think you said this a few episodes ago, and, and I think you're more and more right. 
This is why Sam gets into healthy eating and running, right? It's an anger. It's a, what to do with his anger. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's into like his yoga, yoga which I, pre- I presume that Sam does yoga. Like, I don't think it's ever mentioned, but I feel like that's canon. Yeah. Do yeah. you think so? I think it. I mean, we do see him like bleh, stretch after it, running. Yeah. I think. I think I feel like it, I feel like he must do. He must do. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I feel like all the things we say in later seasons of Sam of yeah him eating good and going out for a run and working out and generally just taking care of himself is likely a way to deal with this these kind of feelings. Mm-hmm. See, he's got the healthy coping mechanisms. <laughs> of the deep. Well, so I remember what the reason why I brought that up is because of the demon blood. So that's why he went vegetarian, because he oh, can't yes. stomach blood anymore. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, everybody knows that like going for a run is supposed to be good for your mental health, even though it feels like crap when you are actually running. It's always reminds me of that Parks and Rec thing. It's like, oh, jogging makes you feel good. And they're like, but at war cost. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that, because I, d- I don't know what's wrong with me. I have, I'm slightly dyspraxic or something. Like, I have actual... I, I can't I, I struggle with stairs like stairs are my bane of my life so I had tried running once like I did the like couch to 5k the first like few times I went out I like fell over like a child like scraped up my knees and everything like my palms and everything <laughs> came home was like I hurted myself <laughs> um and then just, I decided that running wasn't my that wasn't my exercise it's, it's, not, mm-hmm. for, it's not for me <laughs> Yeah, it's not for me either. I just can't breathe while I'm doing it. So I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I hate it. There's so much better exercise out there. Like, I prefer, I would, I massively prefer like hours and I could walk for hours and hours and hours, right? At a mm-hmm. decent pace. But like running for like 10 seconds, no. <laughs> I basically, I'm just dying a zombie apocalypse. That's, that's, yeah, me too. That's the level. Unless they're real slow, I can outwalk them. I'm done for. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's too funny. So, I mean, there's not really much else to say about this episode. As you can tell, we've just gone on this massive tangent. I mean, no, not really. It was what it is. It's like a filler episode after something really important. And I think the next episode is a filler episode too. And it's a bit disappointing, but also not surprising. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You you know, I'm going to keep bringing this up because, like, you said this when we were coming to the end of season four. You were like, there's no filler episodes in this season. We've come across like five or six already. There have been so <laughs> many. I was so wrong. I was so wrong. But I am a big person, so I can admit when I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know. I don't really I really have nothing else to say about this episode. It was just it just exists. Like I probably won't watch it again. No, I probably won't either. I feel like it hasn't aged well. I think the stuff was at the beginning. I think that's what like that's kind of why. Yeah. Um, it's okay. The Wraith is kind of a cool idea that you like suck someone's brain out of a, like, mm-hmm. like a straw. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> we, haven't, we never know the name of the nurse. She's just a nurse. Yeah, she's a nurse. But so. she's also a monster, so do they really care? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, and she wasn't like a good monster either. You know, like sometimes you see these monsters like, oh, I'm just in this to survive. You know, I only right. take what I need. But she was fully reveling in the fact that she was murdering people and like sucking their brains for nefarious reasons. So mm-hmm. also there's no there's no grey area here. Like, yeah, you took her out and probably a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. What's kind of crazy, and I, I obviously it's, it's, it's the Winchester curse, right? So Martin was saying that four, four or five, pa- five patients have died in four months, mm-hmm. but in the span of like a week or whatever, four patients died. Maybe I don't know if they're just unlucky that like you know it's like the in criminal minds where they always seem to catch the killer just they're escalating. Yeah, I feel like it's that. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe maybe the monster because because the Winchesters are there. They have to get their last meals, maybe power up a little bit before yeah. they face them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What's the next episode, Annabelle? 
Uh, so the next episode is meat swap or swap meat even swap meat. I think meat swap is actually a better name for that episode. It sounds rude. It does sound rude. Swapping meat with someone. <laughs> I made myself feel a bit sick. But <laughs> and also the fact that you can't really say that because it is a teenager that takes over Sam's body. So oh no, that sounds I, even I, worse. I regret everything I said. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I apologise. Yeah, I have no memory of this episode. I, I'm looking at a still of it. And I have no memory of this. I remember oh, this one. No, I remember one. I remember the one scene where the teenager's like, I would like one alcohol, please. Mm-hmm. That's the only bit I remember. <laughs> oh, no. I feel like this is going to be cringy. It will be. Oh, well, yeah. I'm really looking forward to this one. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> the, so the only thing that I'm looking forward to is seeing uh, Jared play this like teenage boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's the fun bit of all these all these kinds of films. Yeah. The actual body swapping. They mm-hmm. didn't do enough body swapping with Sam, I feel. Even le- less with Dean. Like, why not? I wanted one time in Supernatural for Cass to possess either of them. That would have been really funny. I, it's so funny. I just <laughs> wanted to see them do Cass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that not came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even make that. Uh, I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No. It would have been. I was gonna say it's just, and it's not in like a outtake or a yeah a not special... in a fun way. <laughs> yeah. For episode purposes. <laughs> There's a convention question. I feel like they haven't already done this, but I would like to do it again. Um, what would, you know, what would Sam or Dean look like if Cass had used him as a vessel? Mm-hmm. I'd like to, I'd like, just like to see it again. I like, I like watching them do impressions of Misha because it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> how, but how much deeper could they make their voices? You have to find out. I mean, that, that's, that's the end of that question. If you can get your voice to go even deeper. <laughs> 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 too funny we've got so many good convention questions Someone, I hope someone out there is collating all of them because I haven't been writing them down no neither have I no. <laughs> come on guys we need the answers chop chop yep. thanks <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of conventions going on right now like starting up so I know. You got, got your questions I'm constantly always quite pleasantly surprised that supernatural conventions are still happening Mm-hmm. I always thought like after it ended they, they were just like no no more it's dead to us but apparently apparently not I mean because they can add the Winchesters to it now yes yeah. there, there is that that's true, that's true. So. alright let's wrap this up shall we yeah okay well thanks for listening to our rambling and we would like to thank the Pixel Agora for his wonderful artwork on our podcast if you would like that on a cup or a, I don't know if they do plates a plate would be cool. You could eat off our logo. Um, go look on Redbubble and see if they do plates. And if you'd like to come talk to us, um, Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, we're Escaping Progretry Podcast or Escaping Podcast on Twitter. Yes. So this week, we checked ourselves in to get some help, but ultimately killed a wraith and ran away. Yep. And learned nothing. We learned nothing. hopefully next week we can find our way out bye bye